Proudly we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Army and your Air Force to bring you this story as proudly we hail the Women's Army Corps. The story is entitled, Let the World See You. The story of just one woman who, like thousands of others, discovered new worlds, new experiences, new adventures in serving her country in the United States Army. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment, but first... Here is a brief word to you young women who graduate from high school this year. Why not get an early start with a job that gives you the feeling of being of real service to your country? You'll enjoy that feeling in the Woman's Army Corps. And you'll be doing a job that will be a little different every day. There are numerous chances of advancement in this newest of services. And you'll be getting the best technical training in the world in the career field in which you are best qualified. So don't let opportunity pass you by. Remember, today, young women between the ages of 18 and 34 can serve their country in a time of great need. Visit your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station and get all the details now. And now your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production, Let the World See You. The time, well after midnight in early November 1950. The place, Camp Drake, Japan, processing point for incoming and outgoing military personnel in the Far East. In spite of the hour, one yellow light still glows in the public information office. Inside, a girl sits hunched over a sheet of paper, her overseas cap pushed to the back of her head. Ordinarily, PFC Dorothy Miller is ever so trim and tidy. Right now, though, she's alone and too engrossed in a letter she's writing to really care. Dear Jean, it's been ages since I've written to you. My whole world seems to have changed since I left home with never a dull moment. First basic training, and then Fort Slocum for public information school, Camp Carson, Colorado, and now Japan. It's all happened so fast that I can't believe it. But will you hear what happened to me yesterday. I met the most wonderful man. Yesterday was my turn to go into Tokyo for the day. It was all wonderful, from the Emperor's Palace on down, and yet very confusing, especially when I found myself completely lost, right in the middle of the Ginza, Tokyo's main street. Anyway, that's where my wonderful man came in. Bicycles by the thousands, cars going lickety-split down the wrong side of the street. Utter, utter confusion. And there was poor me standing right in the middle of it like one of those lambs gone astray and not an MP in sight. And that's when I heard his voice behind me. Need some help, soldier? What? I beg your pardon. Oh, come on now. What's the matter? You lost? Well, yes, I am a little. This isn't exactly Jefferson Street. Huh? Jefferson Street where? Uh, Syracuse, New York. Well, not being in Syracuse at the moment, where would you like to go in Tokyo? To the WAC quarters. To the WAC quarters? Uh -huh. Oh, that's great. They're just all over the city. Oh, well, um, the one I signed into this afternoon was alongside two or three other hotels uh, near an army dispensary. Oh, oh, I know that one. That's way over in that direction. Oh, well, thank you very much. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You're not going to walk over there. Well, why not? That's the way I came. Oh, you get lost again. You better grab a taxi. You, you think it's safe? You couldn't be safer in Syracuse. <laughs> uh, have you eaten yet? Well, no, that's why I want to get back. Well, you know what time it is? You won't get anything to eat there. You better come with me. 
We can get something around the corner and see your heroes. But I couldn't. Oh, I don't... Oh, don't worry. Don't worry. You can even buy your own dinner if that'll make you any happier. Come on, let's go. Oh, this is very nice, Sergeant. Oh, cut out the sergeant business. My name is McBride, Barney McBride. What's yours? Dottie Miller. And you're from Syracuse. Well, not far from Syracuse. Skinny Atlas. What? <laughs> Skinny Atlas. S-K-A-N-E-A-T-E. Oh, never mind, never mind, never mind, never mind. What are you doing at Camp Drake? Well, I'm an information specialist, 3569, if you know what that is. Yeah, you send out news and public relations material to civil union agencies, type releases, keep mailing lists up to date, oh. maintain files of <laughs> photographs and biographical material, conduct interviews, act as a guide for visiting hey, firemen. Hey, that's enough. <laughs> you sound like the officers back at school in Fort Slocum. <laughs> I'm in radio and television with the Far East Service Command. Oh. Konnichiwa. Oh, konnichiwa. Nanega hoshi in deska. Uh, you, what do you want to eat, Doc? I don't know. I can't read the menu. Well, you like fried shrimp? Uh-huh. Okay, Pedro. Shrimp tempura, huh? Uh, hi, hi, hi. Oh, and what about um, uh, skiyaki as a follow-up? Uh, what's skiyaki? you like it. Two skiyaki, too, Pedro. Understand? For her and for me, shrimp and skiyaki. Hi, hi, hi. <laughs> Where did you learn to speak Japanese? Oh, the prong prince and I are buddies. Oh. Want to learn? I'd like to. But I never could do it. Not in a hundred years. Sure you could. I'll give you your first lesson. Here, listen. Repeat after me. Uh. Anatawa. Anatawa. Skides, Sergeant McBride. Skides, Sergeant McBride. Moichido I mosha. Um, moichido I mosha. <laughs> <laughs> there, you see, you did fine. Yes, but what does it mean? You said, I like you very much, Sergeant McBride. I want to see you again very often. Oh. Um, would you excuse me just a minute? I, uh, see a buddy of mine over there. Maybe I can borrow a pack of cigarettes. Hey, uh, pardon me, miss. What? Oh, I I'm sorry, Corporal, but I... I know, I know, I know. You're with Barney McBride. You work with him? No, what? How long have you known him? Well, what difference does it make to you, may I ask? Oh, just curious. I've seen him operating around the Daiichi building. He's got quite a way with dames, that guy. Uh, you tell you he's going to go to Korea in the morning? No, but you... Oh, shh. He's on his way back. I'll see you later. Uh, well, here I am back again. Mission accomplished. Did you miss me? I, um... I, I, I was listening to the music. It's not bad, is it, huh? Sounds better than most of this Japanese stuff I've been hearing around. <laughs> Here, have a cigarette? No, thanks. And it isn't Japanese stuff. It just happens to be Hokey Carmichael. <laughs> La -da, da 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 The nightingale tells his fairy tale. Of you know something, Donnie? Hmm. You're wonderful. <laughs> What are you doing, Barney? Operating? No, no, I mean it, Dottie. You are wonderful. And I hope you won't forget our Japanese lesson, either, because uh, I do want to see you again. Won't that be rather hard? Aren't you going to Korea tomorrow? Where did you hear that? Oh, a little bird told me. Well, okay, if you must know, I'm flying from uh, Tachikawa at 6.30 in the morning. Oh. And I've been over before. I always come back. And I do want to see more of you. I want to learn about... Hoagie Carmichael. <laughs> Tell me you'll teach me. All right, Barney, I'll teach you. Anytime you say the words. <laughs> Dear Jean, it's been nearly a year since I wrote you last, but what a year. I'm on the other side of the world now, in France. That sergeant I met in Tokyo vanished like Jonah in the whale. A couple of weeks after he left, I received five dollars from him for the 1,800 yen he had to borrow to pay the dinner check that night. It was pinned to a scrap of paper that just said, thanks. When some of us wax had a chance to get transferred from Japan to Europe, I jumped at the opportunity. We docked at Le Havre a week ago last Friday. Oh, it was all very exciting. But what should happen to me the moment I stepped off the gangplank? Come on, move along, girls. Come on, move along. You're blocking traffic. All right, all right. Who's next? We got just enough tape to record three more voices. Any of you gals from the deep south? Barney? Barney McBride? 
Dottie. Oh. Dottie Miller. Hi. What are you doing here? Hey, did you get the five bucks I sent you from Korea? Uh, that's all I got. Well, that's not so strange. That's all I sent. I've been all over the place. I haven't had a chance to write to anybody even. I can't get over it. You're being here. Huh, what are you doing here? I'm making hometown recordings, human interest stuff. You know, you record voices of soldiers and wax, and then you send the tapes to the hometown radio stations to use as they see fit, usually in local news broadcasts. Well, here, here, wait, here. How about giving Skinny Atlas a thrill? Barney, you remembered Skinny Atlas. <laughs> you think I'd forget? Come on now, into the mic. Well, okay. Uh, hello, Mother and Dad and everybody in Skinny Atlas. Uh, this is Dorothy Miller speaking from La Havre, France. We had a wonderful trip over, and we... Uh, gee, I don't know what else to say, Barney. I, I've spoiled the tape. Oh, that's all right. I have to edit it anyway when I get back to Paris or Frankfurt. Here, give me the mic. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> do you uh, think you're going to like Paris, Corporal Miller? Well, I'm sure I'll love it now. <laughs> and are you going to uh, see a lot of me? I'd like to. Well, you have to. Every time you get a pass... You'll probably go flying off somewhere. Oh, I won't. Attention, oh, shipment number 964-6A. Oh, shut up. Shipment number 964-6A. Oh. Fall in by the army buses on the double. We're ready to go. Th th that's my shipment, Barney. I have to go. Boy, you will see me. Well, uh, how can I get in touch with you? Phone NATO headquarters and ask for radio PIO. If I'm not there, leave a message. <laughs> So last night, Barney and I had our first date since Tokyo, Jean. Oh, it was wonderful. I met him at the Hotel de la Huchette on what they call the left bank, just a, a block away from the Seine River. We ate by candlelight. And after dinner, we walked out on the Saint Michel Bridge and watched the boats passing by. The moon was shining, and someone someplace was playing an accordion. Isn't that the same song, Dot, they played that night in Tokyo? Barney, you remembered Stardust. Ah, oh, that was lovely. Even if I did have to pay for dinner. Ah, oh, Dottie, I'm sorry I never got back. At least you could have written. But then you were probably busy. Uh, I heard about that joker in the cafe in Tokyo. Sure, I kid around sometimes, but I... I never met anyone like you. Oh, Barney, it's all so perfect. I mean, you and the music and the moon and the water. Oh, gee, I hate to ask you, uh, what time is it? Oh, isn't that just like a woman? I have dreamed of this moment ever since I met you on the other side of the world. And you ask me what time it is. <laughs> uh, it's five minutes of 11. Why? Well, Barney, everything's been wonderful this evening, and I wish I didn't have to go, but I must get back to Lucien. My pass is up at midnight, and the last bus leaves in 15 minutes. You wouldn't want me to be A-W-O-L, would you? No, Dottie, but... Come on, Barney. We better leave. Uh, okay. And now that I've found him again, Jeannie, I'm going to keep him. He's right here. If I can't go see him, he can come and see me. I've never been so happy in all my life. I heard you in the day room, Doug. Oh, uh, what's the matter, Martha? Haven't you seen the bulletin boards? You and I and Mary and Cornelia are all being transferred to Germany. Oh, no. To Heidelberg, no less. What? When do we leave? Tomorrow sometime. We're to be all packed and ready to go by 10 o'clock in the morning. Oh. Well, hey, what's the matter? Well, don't you understand? We're going to Heidelberg. <laughs> You are listening to the proudly we hail production, Let the World See You. Our story will continue in just a moment after this important message. Have you noticed the new trim WAC uniform? It is being worn proudly by the young women who are serving in the Women's Army Corps. This new uniform not only stamps the wearer as being smartly dressed, it also indicates that she is doing her part to keep America strong. If you are a young woman between 18 and 34 and can qualify, you are urged to do your part in making unity, strength, freedom a reality. Go to your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station and enlist in the Women's Army Corps today. 
And now your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production, Let the World See You. <laughs> Dear Jean, when I wrote you last from Paris, I was desolate at the very thought of being transferred to Heidelberg. But then I discovered that Barney works out of Frankfurt as much as he does around Paris. And Frankfurt's just a short distance away. So while they've piled a lot of extra work on me, writing up troop information and education lectures and a million other things, I don't mind it a bit. I've been seeing Barney once or twice a week for the past five months, and... We met again last night in front of the Reichpost Hotel, as usual. And then we walked along the promenade, overlooking the river, until we got to our favorite bench. The old castle, high up on the hillside, was all lighted up with floodlights, and spring was in the air. Listen, Dot, I got something on my mind. Oh, nothing serious, I hope. Oh, well, I don't suppose the world will explode into neutrons, but this situation isn't good. What situation, Barney? Ours or the world's? Ours. I don't like the idea of coming down here from Frankfurt once a week and then scooting back up north again all on the same night. Oh. It's uh, making the trip you object to? No, it isn't the <laughs> trip. It's all the times I can't make the trip. I want to be with you all the time. Not just once and then again like this. What are we going to do when my detachment's moved to Austria? Yeah, I've been thinking about that, too. Listen, when are you going to Salzburg? A couple weeks. Um, Dottie, was there, there was ever a boyfriend in the uh, skinny atlas? Once upon a time. What was his name? Homer. Homer Flips. <laughs> but you needn't worry about him. He got engaged before I ever joined the wax. Maybe married by now. Mrs. Flips. Mrs. Flips? Oh, <laughs> no, no. That doesn't fit you at all. Now, uh, Mrs. Dorothy McBride, now, there's a fine old Irish name for you. Ah. Uh, if, uh... If this is a proposal, you'll have to be more formal. All right, darling. Will you? B but, Barney... No buts about it, Donnie. Why knock ourselves out going on like this when we can be together all the time? Yes, but there are other things a girl thinks about. My family and your family and, and friends and... And besides, how could it work out, Barney? You in Frankfurt and me all the way over there in Austria. You just leave that to me, Dottie. Paris, Frankfurt, Salzburg, they're all one and the same as far as I'm concerned. Now, look, I'll make a request to be transferred to the public information office at Salzburg from Frankfurt. We'll set up housekeeping on the banks of the Salzach River. How about it? Dear Jean, here it is November again. And a lot of water has flowed under the bridges in Heidelberg and Salzburg since you heard from me last. Things started out according to schedule. Our detachment moved to Salzburg in May. Barney was transferred here and brought his stuff down from Frankfurt about a week later. We made arrangements to get married the second week in June when we could both get leave. We leased a little two-room flat over a bookstore that must have been built by the Medicis. It was right around the corner from Mozart's home. And if you leaned way out of the window, you could see the river a block away in the mountains on beyond. Well, Barney drove to Vienna the last of May to make some special recordings, and he said he'd be back the next Wednesday. Wednesday came, and Barney wasn't back. Then Thursday, Friday, still no Barney. I was worried at first, and then I remembered again what that corporal had said in Tokyo about Barney and the girls there. On Saturday, I was visiting the flat on my weekend pass, going over some things with the landlady, Frog Ruber. Oh, what is los, Fräulein? You look so unhappy. Oh, I'd like to cut his ears off, Frog Ruber. Oh, it is the young man, nicht wahr? Yeah, it's the young man. He told me he'd be back Wednesday. Mm, it is not good when you cannot depend on a man. No. Oh, somebody at the downstairs door. I will go see. Hello! Oh, no, you don't have to go see. It's Barney, and it's about time. Hi, honey, I knew I'd find you here. Uh, hello, Mrs. Gruber. Grüß Gott, Herr Feldwebel. I go now. Uh, well, here I am. What did you think, I'd gone over the hill? No, I was worried. Y you said you'd be back Wednesday, and I didn't hear from you. Oh, well, uh, Brenda and I got held up by the commies. Brenda? Yeah, Brenda Potter, the photographer. You've seen her stuff in Weekend Pictorial. I don't know as I have. Oh, well, she's very well known. She's been doing a special feature on Vienna. She's on her way up now. She's coming up here? Yeah, sure. I ran into her at a news briefing in Vienna, and I offered to drive her back. The commies picked us up in the Russian zone, and 
That was that. They didn't like the looks of her camera or my tape recorder. I think they thought we were spies. I... Donnie, what's the matter? Don't you believe me? Well, this is quaint, Barney. Oh, yeah, come on in. Well, meet the famous Brenda Potter, Dot. How are you? Hello. Here she is, Brenda, the future Mrs. McBride. Oh, Barney's spoken so much about you. He's evidently had plenty of time to do it in. Say, is there some days I can comb my hair? It's simply blown to pieces. The bedroom is in there. Oh, thanks so much. I'll only be a minute. Then what's the matter with you, Dot? So it was the commies who held you up. Are you sure it wasn't that redhead? You're out of your mind. If you got picked up by the commies, why wasn't it in the newspaper or on the radio? Well, why should it be? Such things always are. No, they're not. You only hear about the incidents that make the headlines. Besides, my job keeps me moving. It's difficult to let everybody know just where I am. I operate from many points. Well, that's just it. That's what the corporal in Tokyo said. He said you were quite an operator. Oh, for Pete's sake, Dot, I've explained that was all a gag. Oh, I'm not so sure. Not after this. Oh, calm down, honey. Now, look, I'm sorry well, if I'm I I'm not sorry. I'm glad. What? I'm glad it happened before and not after the chaplain got around to marrying us. I've learned my lesson. I'm through. Well, what are you going to do? I'm going back to the barracks. And you needn't try getting in touch with me tomorrow, next week, or next year. I'm through. Dot, listen. Is anything the matter, Bonnie? Oh, no. Nothing's the matter. Nothing's the matter. Darling, wait. Dot! Corporal Miller reporting, ma'am. Sit down, Corporal. Uh, what's on your mind? Well, I understand there's to be a new whack detachment in Leghorn, Italy, Captain Holbrook. I, I'd like to put in for an assignment there. You want to leave Salzburg? I thought you were getting married here. I changed my mind. That's the reason I want to go to Italy. I want to forget the whole thing. I see. Well, I noticed by your records, after you told me about your wedding plans, that your three years are up in November. What do you intend to do? Re-enlist over here? I don't know, ma'am. For the last three years, I felt that I was doing something worthwhile. I've seen and done more than I ever dreamed of, and I would like to get a little more rank, but... May I, I think it over, Captain Holbrook? Certainly. But you'd still like to go to Italy. I'd be willing to leave right now. Very well, Corporal Miller. I'll see what can be done. Leghorn was very nice. If you like blue skies and blue seas and wide, sandy beaches. But I didn't have the time. So I wrapped myself up in my work, getting things ready for the wax due in from the United States and trying to forget the past 18 months. They even gave me another stripe, made me a sergeant. And then, rotation back to Camp Kilmer, New Jersey. So here I am about an hour out of New York, all ready to become a civilian again, within the next 10 minutes, as soon as I pick up my separation papers. I can't seem to decide about re-enlisting, but I have 90 days to make up my mind and still keep my sergeant's stripes. Tell Mother and Dad that I'm on my way, as ever, Dottie. Oh, P.S., I'm mailing this letter in the post exchange when I go to catch my bus. Ah, uh, pardon me, uh, could you tell me where the mailbox is? Over there by the front door, ma'am. Oh, I see it, thank you. So you've reached the point where recruits uh, call you ma'am, eh, Dottie? Barney! Where did you come from? Oh, I spotted you crossing the parade ground, so I followed you. Ah, you're looking pretty spiffy. You've seen this dress before. But I never saw you wearing an honest-to-goodness hat. Now, how about a cup of coffee? I, uh... I I'm going to New York. I have to catch a bus. Well, look, the New York bus doesn't leave for 20 minutes. Come on in here, snack bar. But, Barney, I... Come on, come on. Hey, see? This is much better. Oh, uh, two cups of coffee. Coming up, soldier. Oh, I shouldn't be doing this. The only thing you shouldn't have done is run out on me in Salzburg. I presume you saw Brenda Potter's article in Weekend Pictorial? I saw it when I got back here two days ago. She's a horrible writer. I could do better myself. At least you found out I wasn't two-timing you. That it wasn't our fault we didn't get back to Salzburg on time. All right. I apologize for everything I said. 
Well, as things turned out, it'll save you the trouble of introducing me around Skinny Atlas when you get home. I didn't say I was going home. Oh, well, I supposed that you were. I was talking to Captain Haynes from classification and assignment, and he mentioned that you had re-enlisted and were going home on a short leave. Uh, he happened to mention my name? <laughs> Well, yes, after I'd asked him if a certain whack Sergeant Dorothy Miller had passed through these parts recently. I told him I uh, certainly could use you in Panama. They're opening a new PIO office there. We're looking for competent people. Panama? That's right. Sailing Saturday. Oh, by the way, did your boyfriend, uh, what's his name, Homer Flips, did he ever get married? <sighs> what is that to you? Nothing, nothing. I... Just wondering if you'd be thinking of me when you're washing out his socks or playing Pachisi with your mother and all. Oh, here's your coffee, Sergeant. Oh, thank you. Hey, does this uh, jukebox work? You gotta put a nickel in. I kind of figured that. Thanks. Might as well have a little music while we're waiting. Ah, it should be quite a deal in Panama, Daddy. Of course, I know I'll be busy, but it'll be fun. Oh, gosh, if I were only married, I'd have my own quarters, maybe even my own banana tree. While you're washing out those socks, I'll be lying on the beach and watching the lovebirds and the parakeets singing in the palm trees. Barney, you're a louse. Why, what's the matter now? Y you didn't have to play Stardust. Huh? Star? Oh, so it is. Oh, well, don't fret, honey. It'll be over in a minute. Barney. Oh, yes, and uh, while you're thinking of me over that wash tub, remember, it could have been you beside me on that beach. Just the two of us. Hey, where are you going? I... Let go of me, Barney. I, I have something to do. You haven't got a thing to do for another ten minutes. Yes, I have. I'm going to see Captain Haynes and see if he'll assign me to Panama. I have a hunch it would be my best assignment. And that we'll is... see about that beach business. <laughs> an opportunity for you young women of America. An opportunity to get in step with the smartest. Today, the rapidly expanding Women's Army Corps, proud newcomer on the team of defense, needs qualified young women between the ages of 18 and 34. This is your chance to do an important job. The pay is good, with excellent prospect of rapid advancement. Why not check with your local United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station today? You'll find that it's easy to get in step with these proud American women who are serving their country in the Women's Army Corps. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Bureau for the United States Army and United States Air Force Recruiting Service. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking and inviting you to tune in the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail.